We're just gonna pretend it's summertime and we're in Canada and not in Wisconsin where it's cold. What's going on everybody? My name is Brian, you're watching Angling Anarchy. And yes, it is cold in Wisconsin. And yes, we are gonna watch some midsummer musky fishing from Eagle Lake. How are we gonna do that? I have footage from 2014 that I've really never done much with. I discussed this on the last video. So this is going to be, I guess, a little bit of a series. Uh, I did a trip in 2014 with my dad and boated 17 muskies in five days of fishing four full days and two half days on either side of that technically i guess so um but yeah i this is footage i've never really done anything with because at the time i didn't know how to edit very well uh, you may have seen some of these clips i maybe just threw them up on facebook but like i said they weren't edited together very well so now that i'm a little bit better at that we're going to revisit some of these clips and today's video we only get one fish in the boat, but we have some other cool stuff happen, so I'm gonna go over that real quick. So this first one is, I didn't keep the footage from the uh, camera that I have up top, and I would say if, if you're gonna start filming, save all that footage because you never know what you're gonna need. I, I started just, I don't know, keeping the clips I thought were cool and getting rid of some of the other stuff. There again, that, that was from my lack of editing, editing experience. Uh, some of that stuff that doesn't seem like much, it can be when you start putting it all together. So save those clips. But anyway, this is a fish that came in on a figure eight and you can see it really well in the water. Uh, it goes around a couple times and it's, it's just kind of fun to watch the fish react to the bait. Coming hard. Oh, he came. Oh, he's back on. Look at that. He's still under here. It's just, I just saw him under mine. Oop. And he went by yours. He was hot on that. He bumped it twice. Did he? Yeah. And he stayed there for a while. Oh, he oh, he's still here. Yeah? They're right under there. God, as hard as he was coming, I thought he was going to plow that thing. I'm surprised he stuck around so long. And then later in the day, we had this other fish. I could see it sitting there. The, the water's quite calm. I could see it sitting there. I let my bucktail drop down in the water column a little bit, drug it past its nose. He came up, chased it in the figure eight, and I actually had him on for a second. Oh, yeah, look at that. oh. yep, I see the boil. I got him. Oh, I had him. Yeah. <laughs> that was a wow. nice one. He, I, I, I started reeling as fast as I could, and I brought it past him, and I saw him turn around, and he came right in, right up at the top of the eight, he hit it. So after the success of the first day where we sh basically showed up and boated a 47, a 49, a 41, uh, I'll leave that video up here if you haven't seen that one yet, but we came in and just absolutely crushed the fish. We weren't doing so hot the second day. We contacted a couple of fish that we've seen before, uh, but other than that, we really weren't seeing much. So I finally got a fish to eat the bait. Uh, it was a really cool eat and started fighting the fish and this happened. This in. My rod just broke. <laughs> oh no. I thought I heard the crack. Yeah. I couldn't get it deep enough to 
Get him. My shoulder doesn't like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a couple things that you'll notice from that clip. Obviously, uh, partway into the fight, the rod broke, which was weird because that's the same rod I caught the 47, the 49, the 41 just the previous night before on. So I don't know if maybe it got uh, bruised in the boat, it got stepped on, cracked, whatever. Uh, either way, it was a little bit tougher to fight that fish with uh, a foot and a half less rod than you're used to having. Uh, you just obviously don't have that play of the rod to uh, buffer the head shakes of the fish and that sort of thing. But one thing that came out of this is I realized that when I got there, I was so excited to fish, I didn't go over with my dad like how to properly net a muskie. Uh, if you noticed in the last video and in this one where I lose the fish, he's putting the net in sideways and kind of scooping from the side. And I just didn't take the time to show him how to put the net in like this way and scoop from under. So after that fish got away, which if, if I would have shown him the right way, that was on me. If I would have shown him the right way to net, we probably could have got that fish. He could have gotten under it. As soon as that bait popped out, we would have scooped him right up. So, uh, you know, that was something I learned uh, just kind of by watching that, that video uh later on and saying to myself I, I should have told him how to do that properly instead of just being excited to go fishing so real quick guys here's where filming even if you're not going to do what i'm doing have a youtube channel all that stuff i would just start filming to watch what you're doing help it improve your figure eight help you notice something that maybe in the the heat of the moment or during the day you don't notice but when you go back and watch that footage you can go oh uh, I should be doing this. Um, not only does filming help you, you know, catalog these moments. I mean, it's it's better than a picture as far as I'm concerned because, you know, if you catch a muskie, you get a picture. That's great. If you lose a muskie, you've got a story, but you don't have anything to go along with it. I have so many lost muskies that I have video of, and I, I feel like I, it's a little bit more tangible uh, than just having a story about it. You can actually watch it. And some of those lost fish are just as spectacular as some of the catches. So I would encourage everyone to, you know, go out get that GoPro, get a, an action cam and set it up somewhere in the boat, get one of the YOLO tech sticks. I'd actually just picked one of those up. That is a really cool piece of equipment that makes filming really easy. Uh, I've got a link for the YOLO tech sticks down in the description below. You can check them out down there, but uh, yeah. Get it out there and, and start filming your fishing adventures. It can be very beneficial to you. And not only can you figure out what you're doing wrong, you can, like I said, it's better than photos. I have this entire trip that I took with my dad. I've got all the catches on film. He only caught three muskies. Now, he was, and he was perfectly fine with that. He was just happy to be up there. I mean, we both had a great time. I think he was just getting a kick out of watching me catch the muskies up on the front of the boat. and. No, to be fair, I offered the front to him and he declined. So I wasn't just being a fish hog, but uh, you know, I, I've got all this stuff on film and I can go back and watch this stuff and you know, all the hugs and the high fives. It's so cool to have that and be able to go back and watch that. So uh, those are two reasons to get out there and film guys. Uh, so I'll get off that soapbox here and I'm going to show you the beautiful 46 and a half inch fish that we ended up boating that night finally after losing a couple fish during the day and here's that.
<laughs> he took off before I had a chance to even get in front of him. That's a nice one. Thank you. Yeah, it's a nice one. <laughs> That's good. Did you see him when he hit on the eight at all? Or? No. It's all right. Yeah, but he wound himself up. Six and a half. Do you want to take one more? I think. Uh, here's what it looks like. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Okay, we'll get her back in. Forty-six and a half. Yep. <laughs> that's not quite what I wanted for a release, but <laughs> she went. She went. Huh? <laughs> Just started to flop. Uh, kick, so I just let her go. Let her go. <laughs> yeah, she didn't come in real hard, but I, I went out and you could just see her. She was watching it. As soon as it made that turn, she came straight up. Okay. Uh, uh, perfect. I wish I'd all do that. Well, I hope you enjoyed a little bit of warm summertime musky fishing in the cold days here in the northern parts of the country. You lucky dogs uh, in the southern parts of this country that are still fishing for muskies right now, um, my hat's off to you. I'm super jealous right now. And to those of you all that are ice fishing, I hope you're having some good luck out there. I really haven't been doing all that much lately. Uh, I, I have this boat project. You know, there's no, there's no motor, there's no nothing. In fact, here, real quick. Look at that. That's the transom. It's really not. Oh yeah, look at that. It's, it's not in that good of shape. So that's going to be an upcoming video. Uh, I will have this transom repair uh, for my Crest liner. Uh, I'm working on that right now instead of fishing. So that's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. We've got a couple more videos to come from this trip back from 2014 on Eagle Lake. Thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate every single one of you, and I will see you on the next video.